Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you are all doing great. Uh, thanks for our participant from the first cohort that they joined us. Uh, this is really an important topic because uh, as we mentioned yesterday, that we have a great opportunity for all of you. Uh, and it's a really competitive uh, opportunity because we had we have to choose among of you only 10 to 15 participants. Uh, you will going to join another session of expert in graphic design because now you are just like taking, um, uh, well, I'm saying a basic knowledge, but indeed this is really deep knowledge in graphic design. Uh, but later on, they will give you uh, another course and then they will, um, among all these 15, maybe they will use five to 10 of you and they will give you a job. And this job is not a normal job, it's an online job, but you are just earning for each of them. The minimum is $250 and the maximum is around $7,000. So be prepared give your time to this opportunity and try to take as much as possible of it. And then um, I'm wishing you all the best for later on. Um, so again, thank you all. And let's start. So yesterday we just talked about graphic design in detail. Uh, so today is gonna be um, installing the software that I pick it for you. This is one of the, the, the best software ever because it's first for free, second is an open source, third is easy to use, and fourth is just doing exactly the same jobs that the, the same job that uh, Photoshop is doing for you even better. So let's start. What we have here, uh, we are just going to open um, tab on our browser and I will type G I M P dot org. Jim dot org. Exactly this way. Enter. G I M P dot org. Enter. I want you all to just start it with me because this is our first beginning. We are installing the software and then we will do the things step by step. So yes, please do it with me. So first open your browser and type GIMP, G -I -M -P .org. It will open this page for you. Here we are just going to download the software, click on it. It will take you to this uh, page. And in this on this page, you will find that we have uh, the software that is working on Windows platform, Linux platform, and OS uh, platform, which is like Mac, and it is platforms that can be used. So between these two, I'm picking the orange one, which is downloaded directly from the website. Um, me, some of you before used torrent or BitTorrent, it's fine. Uh, it's not make any different. I prefer to download it directly from the website. I don't want to take me somewhere else and do this. No, I will just download it from here. Before downloading, okay, let me click. Now it's downloading as you see here. While I'm downloading, I want to just give you an overview about this software. So this software, as I told you, is open source. It's not asking you for money, not now and not ever. So it's gonna be for free your whole life. And this software is really normal. It doesn't require any specific uh, hardware uh, or software. All you need is a Windows 7 and above. So unfortunately, it's not working on XP. But fortunately, Windows XP is just like now vanished. So 
people or they are using Windows 7 or Windows 10. So if you are using Windows 7, you are one of the lucky people that you can just use this software without any problem. If you are using Windows 10, you are luckier because you have no problem at all with downloading. Then if you have space more than 200 megabyte, so you are one of those lucky people that you can just download the software without any problem. Here, there's two type of the software or two versions, which is 32-bit and 64-bit. So when we are saying 32-bit and 64-bit is not about any specific, um, let's say, requirement. It's just about your Windows. And this two 32 bits and 64 bits is not something that's super difficult to understand. No, it's just about the trans um, forming the data between cache, um, CPU, RAM, and the main memory, which is your hard disk. So these information, when they are traveling through your uh, hardware, if you are using 32 bits, so 32 bits is just taking 32 bit of package and transfer it. So it's going to be a bit slower than 64 bits because 64 bits is just like taking 64 uh, bit of package and transform it through the hardware part of your computer. So if you are using with 30, 32 bit, you have no problem and you can download the software and it's, it still work. If you have a Windows that is working on 64 bits, it's also have no problem and it's working properly. This is really fun. This is really interesting because this software just makes your life easier and it doesn't require any specific uh, things from you to just have it, then you can just use this software. Later on, the next week, inshallah, we will try to use another software. May this software be a bit more complicated because it's just working as an um, illustrator. So you now, like me, well, not all of you now about Illustrator, but some of you hear about Illustrator. Illustrator is one of the software which is from the Adobe uh, family. So the Adobe families, they are just requiring First, they are asking for money to just give you licenses. Second, they will ask you for uh, um, specific um, hardware properties. So it's going to be a bit hard. That's why we are just skipping those and we are trying to use the software, which is for free. And let's just work on it so hopefully as it is done with me in one minute um so i hope that it's gonna be the same with you because installing is as easy as downloading it so don't be worried even if the downloading will take longer time with you just look at the way that i'm installing so you can just later straight install it in few clicks uh so yeah i i I'm, I'm really excited and i'm super happy that i can just give you this um these sessions about graphic design because graphic design is one of the best uh soft skill that you have to now especially nowadays because as you know like the other things is easier and it's more uh compatible for everyone but when it's coming to graphic design graphic design needs more skills and needs more uh, attention so yes um well while we are here in in gym let's see what is gym gym is a abbreviation of gnu image manipulation program which you can manipulate an image using this program and using this software. Then still we are on gym.org. If you are just going here 
on tutorials, you will find a really good tutorial for you to teach you. So any of these that you are picking is just giving you some hint and some tricks to manipulate image or creating a logo or doing anything that is coming to your mind while we are talking about uh, graphic design. So this skill, it just like give you opportunity to do whatever you want while this topic is just coming to graphic design. So after we just download it, we, just, we are just clicking here to run the software, run it. Now I'm waiting for the software to answer me. It asks you if you want to install just for yourself or for all users on your computer. I'm just installing for all users because I know that I'm admin. So if, if in case, if may, I will give this laptop to someone else later on to use it, but I'm not giving the permission of admin, I will create a new uh, user for this person. So I want them to also have the software there. So I will install it for all users. Now I agree of installing the software. Yes. Um, as you see, there's many languages here that you can just install the software with, but I prefer and I suggest to you to just install it in English language because later on, if you start working with um, your photo, they won't give you the, the project in Arabic, they will give you in English. So you have to have really a good English background while you are working with them. So try to improve your English. However, your English is really good. Uh, so here we see that this is Jim 2.10 and we want to install it. Well, now it's just extracting the files to my C drive and it will install the software when the extracting is finished. Uh, let's wait. While we are waiting, may you get this software from some flash pen uh, or memory pen, or maybe you will get it on a CD. So here it just gives you an opportunity to know about gym.org. So when you know gym.org, you can just go here and find the tutorials, find the, all the new updates and new new uh, all the news about uh, gym. So you can just come here and take a look at here. Um, you can do these things with Jim, which is programming, painting, uh, photo editing, and some basic knowledge for beginners. So you can just start from the very first one and then go one by one deeper and deeper. Uh, when you are clicking on these topics, it will take you uh, inside and here you see how you can work with your uh, project or what you want to do with your project. Everything is just like mentioned here in clearly and super easy way. So yeah, that's why like I just tried this software. I just tested before installing it for you and before giving it to you. So we know that this software is working without any problem. Maybe the software that we are using next week, it has some uh, glitch or some problem or some drawbacks, but we can focus on Jim for all the things that may you face to, uh, or, or, or any project that they will gonna give you, uh, in, in the future or any job that you can you can do, you can just use Jim for it. Uh, it's one of the best. It's just doing photo editing, uh, typography. It's just doing your like the, you're creating new um, image from scratch, uh, creating a logo, creating a brochure, creating a background. Um, 
picture for something or creating a cover uh, picture for an account that may they, they will ask you. So these things can be done with using Jib. So finish now. We done how to find the software. We are just going here and we will write Jim. It will give me this little cute foxy uh, icon. I can just click on it. We will wait for it until it will start because this is the first time. So it might take few minutes. Even not minutes, may it take like one minute or less. Yes, thank you. It just took less. So maybe for you, it's going to be a dark theme. So how to change the theme? You are just going to edit. Here, edit. We have the menu boss here, the navigation bar. We are just going to edit and then to performance. You see here, it's written performance with a picture or a, a, an icon for um some tools click in general for you when you are just opening the the, the performance it will just show you this interface so go to the interface there and you have themes here the themes for you it's on the dark theme something like this and also the icon is on the uh symbolic i think and uh, some of these i think it's on this one i guess it's this one yeah for you is something like this so how to change it because this dark theme is a bit annoying you are just going to edit then performance on the edit we have performance then when it's opening this interface I'm going to theme. From the theme, I will choose the system, which is a light background and everything is clear and I can see it more obvious. Then for the icon, we have the legacy. The legacy is just the um, old fashioned style of uh, the icons or you can pick colors. This is the colors. You can just do it this way or you can just pick the legacy. It's all up to you. You are the, the decision maker. Then later on, we are just going to the toolbox. From the toolbox, in or let's say on or your, your uh, software may this be selected so just remove it because you don't need it to to show this logo you need to show the uh, foregrounds and background color then if you want to show the uh, active brush you can just select the active brush and also showing the image uh, active image that you are working on then or you can just remove this two just keep this one on and use a group and okay now i have it this way or i can just go back to performance and from the icon choose the legacy which is the old fashion of the icons i can just pick this one so now i have it in this way which is i can see them one by one clearly without any problem so this is how you can manage your interface maybe some of you prefer the dark face the dark interface so keep it on the dark interface if you want a gray interface pick a gray interface if you want a system you can just pick a system one all up to you no one can tell you that because you are not using this interface. So I won't select or pick your word. No, it's all up to you. So what I am doing now, I am explaining to you what are these interfaces here and what we have it on the first interface of our uh, gym. 
So first we said, this is the navigation bar or this say the menu bar that you can just go from here, file, edit, select, view, image, layer, colors, tools, filters, windows, and help. You can pick any of them and look for the things that you are trying to use. Then what else we have? We have this bit, which is, this is really an important part of our gym. Excuse me. So yes, sorry guys. So now we want to talk about this bit here. What are these icons and what are they doing for me? These are the tools that I'm going to use while I'm working on um, an image or a project, anything. These are the tools that I'm using it. Then each of these tools, if I select it, I have different properties for them. So these properties are vary from one to another. So if you are just looking at them, you see it just changing according to the one that I'm picking. So nice and easy, you can just see them all as it is here. Great. Then what else we have? We have the brush here. It just shows you the type of brush that you can just use it when you are in need for a brush. Then what else we have? We have the patterns. These are the patterns that you can just use it as a background for your project. Or you can just take one of these backgrounds and make changes and use it later on for your project. Then we have the typography, which is the font families that is exist and you can just find them here. And this is the history of your previous work. If you use any of these, it just shows you here. Then uh, what else we have? We have the layers, which is this is like the best part because later on you understand what are these layers can do for you. Then we have the channels that is working on the colors and the things that you can do it on your layers. Then it's just coming to the paths. These paths just not for now, maybe don't use it right now, but later on when you are, we are going deeper, we need to use this path to just give the, the um, let's say the, the squints of our layers, how they can be showing. Um, this is all the information about the interface in general. So let's start. Now you are stepping into graphic design world. Let's see, is it that difficult? Is it, is it that difficult to be um, well paid that much of money? The minimum going to be 250 and the maximum be $7,000. This is really something tricky. So we want to know and we want to understand, is it that difficult? So first what I'm doing, going to file, creating a new layer. So for creating a new layer, I'm just coming here or control N if you are using the shortcut or just coming to the file and click on new. Well, now I clicked on new. So what I have, I have here, it's written template. So it's exactly the same template as we have it for WordPress. There's a bunch of standard and size that you can just use it according to what you are designing for. If you are designing an A0, you can just pick A0. If you are designing A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, then if you are designing a um, cover letter for a CD or you are designing something for iPhone 7, uh, 6 and 7, iPhone 5, when it says six and seven, so it means that uh, for 10, 11, and 12, and this 13, just, just being 
released so you can just use it for them as well so we have it for uh ipad and also we have for samsung and things like this we have for also for the tablets um any of these if you want to pick you can pick if not i'm just going here i will just say i need some base like this i don't want much more so you can just pick the measurement if you want for example if you wanted in inch in millimeters in points in picas any centimeter meter it doesn't matter so i'm just picking pixel because i have no problem then what else we have in advanced options we have the resolution because when you are dealing with pictures you have to be careful about the resolution if you make it so high then it will be a really big size of the image and may uh, editing or working on it later on or sending it by email is going to be a bit hard however there is like sharing within a drive this is an, uh, an opportunity but if they didn't ask you for really good resolution so you can just like take to 300 is fine x and y x axis and y axis then we have the colors then we have the presentations which is going to be an 8-bit integer then we have gamma which is also are related to the color and the resolution and we have some other extra information that we don't need it now but later if we need it we will explain it more so i picked 1080 by 720 and okay now it just give me this interface so if i want to make it smaller there's two way two ways first if I have a laptop and I have a mouse pad, so I can just do by two fingers to just zoom it and zoom it, uh, zoom in and zoom it out. This is one of the way and the other way, uh, this is one of the ways that the other way is just like using the mouse um, by our, the, those mouse who they have a scroller. If you want to zoom it and zoom out, you can just press on control and zoom it by scrolling down and scrolling up for zoom out then if you want to move it from right to left or anything else you can just do the pad mouse here on my laptop but if you have um let's say an external mouse uh this way you can just do it using shift and scroll up and scroll down is just doing the same thing for you moving it to right and left well so first we just create the first layer how we know that we create the first layer when we are coming here we see there's a layer here it's, it's written background how to change this name double click i will call it first layer and let's keep the background with it because we are going to use it as a background so we have first layer it's a background then i see here there's something else written which is um th there's something else up here which is a tab this tab is representing your layer that you are working on it's easy and fine we don't have any problem with it then what else we can use? We just can bring something else. For example, if I just went to Google, here in Google, let's bring Uncle Google here and write floor and go into the image. Um, let's pick this flower and right click open it first yeah it's fine so i'm just right clicking and say copy i just copied i didn't download it i didn't save it i just copied copy now i'm going to gym 
Here, I'm going to file. This time, I'm clicking on create. And from create, I will just say create from a clipboard. Okay. So what I did, I just went to file. After I copy it, I went to file and then create from a clipboard. I click here. Hola, I have another layer in another tab because I didn't match these layers together. So that's why I have it separately. So this is the first one and this is the second one. The second one is just written pasted layer. If you want to change it, double click and say flower. Enter. Then if I want to open an image that I, that I already save it, I'm just going to open or control O. Then I can just pick from here any of these. Let's say I'm just picking this one. Open. Great. So I have one layer, two layer, three layer. So these are not layers because we didn't put them on each other. They are separate. Well, if I want to bring a layer on this layer, how to do it? Nice and easy. I'm just going here. And this time I will say open as a layers. This time I will pick, let's say this logo, University of Sulemani logo, and then open. Hola, I have it here. Um, uh, as a, sorry, I don't want this. I don't want this. Not this. I just want to get the selector. Is my selector. Uh, no, it's not a selector. This is the uh, rectangle. It has to be here, but why it's not showing me? It has to be with this, this one. So just a minute, guys. I'm sure that you have the selector on your uh, Uh, on your system, but here I just can't see selector. So I have to see where it is. Where are you, Mr. Selector? I just I think I just found it. Can I be here? No. Um, I was just like, before you are coming, I was just playing with it, to be honest. That's why I just feel um, I'm confusing the system. can see the selector. However, when I'm clicking here, it just shows me that it's in the magnifier. Yeah, it's with zoom, offset. And here is the move. Yes, I just wrote it now. Ooh, yes. So now, if you are seeing here, I can just move it wherever and whenever I want this way. So there's two layers here. This is the first layer and this is the second layer. 
because I just decide to put them together. So if I just click on this eyes and I want to close this eyes, this eye here, you see the only layer that I have it. And here, if I want to remove this one, this layer, it's not removing, it's just like hiding from the eyes. So like this, you can just see this layer and see that layer both together. Great. So now what are we doing? Let's go back to our blank uh, background. Then let's create our own, let's say first, I want to create a rectangle. So here I'm creating this rectangle or I will just create a um, square shape. Now, if you are looking, this shape is the, I can see the outline of it, but still I didn't create it. How to create it? I have to press enter. After I press enter, I see the layer is just like moving. So it means that I create layer fully. So now if I want to make this layer to be visible, how to make it? I'm just going to the bucket fill tools, which is a kind of paint. I will click on it. After I click it, then I can just come here on this uh, dark square, which is here. I'm just clicking. Then from here, I can just pick a color. Let's uh, say I want this color. And I will say OK, and then fill it. Just by one click, I just filled this square with the color that I want. Now I'm going back to the selector. So if I want to move it, I cannot move it. Why? Because still it's part of my background. How to make it a different layer? It's nice and easy. I will just do Control X to cut it then control v to paste it again so now it just shows me that this a layer here need to be pasted how to paste it i'm just clicking on this icon here so bam i just paste my layer there and now i can just move it whenever and wherever i want nice and easy there's nothing to be worried about i can just move it around and put it wherever and whenever I want. This is how I create a new layer on my background. So let's do it again. But this time I'm not using a um, square or a rectangle shape. I'm using something else. I'm using a circle shape. So for the circle shape, before creating my circle shape, I have to decide where I want to create this shape. If I start creating the shape right now, it won't show me anything. Why? Do you know why I cannot see anything if I did it this way? Guys? Where are you? Okay, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, thank you, Fennec. So because I'm selecting this layer right now is if you see so it doesn't let me to create any layer here and see it i have first to go and select this layer then come in here to create my shape this is the shape i want and then press enter now i'm going to use the same thing i'm going to the bu uh, bucket and then click on the bucket from here, I'm just going to click on the dark line, uh, square. From the dark square, let's just pick a color that's gonna show or can be seen on that one. So I think this one is good. So, okay, and then fill it. Nice and easy. I have this one here. It's another layer. So how to use this layer? This time I'm not cutting. I just do Control C, copying, and then Control V, paste it. 
again, it just sh shows me that there's some layer being created but need to be added. Where do you want to add it? I will just want to add it here. So now I'm just going back to the selector or the move tool. Then let's move this guy. Oops, we have two. One of them is gonna be part of the background. And the second one is the one that I just created and selected by my own. So it means that I can have two shape or two sample of the, the layer that I just want to create at the same time one is going to be part of the background and the other going to be a new layer that's going to be out of the background. So for this one, I have it here. If I want to put it over this one, mm, uh, no, no, I can't see it. So how to make it to be visible? Nice and easy. I will just come here and grab this layer by drag and drop or selecting this layer and move it down using this uh, sign, which is like an arrow down. Hola, I see my background. Here is the other color, which is the uh, purple background. It's just on this shape or it becomes a background for my circle or the yellow circle. If I want to move it, I can just move it whenever and wherever I want without making any trouble for me because I already decide that I'm going to take it this way. If I want to put it back, I can just drag and drop, put this up and put this down. So now this is going to be the background for that one. And this is going to be over, or this, 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 the, the purple square is going to be over the circle, uh, the yellow circle that I created. So I can just decide which background or which layer going to be behind which one and how it can't show. So again, if I want to see how it will be the output, I can just remove the main background well i can see it this way it's fine just bring it back so now i have these two layers that they are each over the other and everything is fine and clear you can just do it using patterns you can just do it using um, anything else for example if i want this time to just uh, Let's just use a different shape. Uh, where is it? I just want, I hate this grouping. I really hate it because I have all the time go back here and find the free selector which is not there. So let's move this. Yeah, now I, I am a bit released. So I'm just using the free selector. This one, you can just create the shape that you want. For example, I want just to create this shape. I'm just doing this. When the line is just reaching each other, this orange dot, it will appear. I just click and then enter. Now, did I did it well? Can I see the output now? Can I see it, guys? What do you say? Did I did it right or wrong? Mm. Uh, unfortunately, no, because I didn't select the background. 
So I have to do and select this one. Uh, sorry, select this one. And then I have the right to create because before I was on this one, which is the yellow one. And I had to draw on the yellow, but I didn't draw it on the yellow. I just drew it on the white background. So I have to select the white background. Then if that I want to create. Now I'm just going to fill it. Pick a color. This time let's choose another color. Uh, it's fine. Okay, so I have this color as well. I create it. I have just to control X, then control V to paste it and then group them together. Now, use the selector and move this wherever and whenever you want. And you can just put it here, you can just put it there. You can just take this up, something like this. So this is how you are <coughs> creating different shapes for your uh, image. And this is one of the easiest way to do it. You can just use these colors. You can just go here, use a pattern for your color. You can just make a decision while you are. Uh, let's just first create here, go here. While I'm selecting this one, I can just make it feather age. So for the feather age, I can just reduce it for 15 is fine. So let's create our circle, then enter, go and fill it with some color. Um, let's just pick some crazy color. Ah, it's fine. And fill it. Wow. So you are seeing something weird here. Why it is like this? because we here decide to change the way that the edge can be shown. It's not a sharp edge, it's a soft edge around my circle because I decided to be this way. I made this decision. I can also fill it with some sort of these backgrounds. If I want, it's all up to you. So you can just make change in the filling that you want to fill it. You can just make the blue or anything of the, the colors around this. So I don't want to confuse you for right now because this is your first day in, in using these tools. So let's just keep it simple. I just want to show you if you want to make the, the edge be softened, not sharp as it is here, then control X, control V and group them. Now I have this as well. Uh, do. So if I want to fill it like this, I can just do it and then go use the selector. So you can just move it around because I didn't give anything to this outer that I created. So the outer is will stay where it is as a part of my background as uh, it was with this one. And we can just move this from anywhere and just try to do it whenever and wherever you want. So this is how you can just make uh, different shapes and different backgrounds for your uh, 
project that you want, you can just do it this way and do it any other ways that you just prefer. So nice and easy. You can just do it whenever and wherever you want. Uh, in these few little clicks that I did it without even spending any time, uh, it just like happened by itself. I can just grab a, a, a written pattern and put it over the, the part that I want. Uh, let's just make it um, something, tiny something. Uh, okay. I can just write here, sorry. I can just start writing here. Uh, impact. Okay. I can make it bold. I can change the color to black. Okay. And what else I can do here? I can just um, change the things that I want to just to fit it the way that I want. And enter, sorry. And then I can just see this also as a layer. I can just remove it. I can just bring it back using the selector just to move around and make this like this. It's all up to you. You can just do it whenever and wherever you want. So yes, this is enough for today, I think, because we just took some few things, some basic on using the normal tools that are here, like the rectangle, the circle, the free. Then we just use selector. We just use the bucket. Yes, I did. Uh, so yeah, we have these few things. Uh, we know how to create the layers and how to create the new projects for yourself and Hola, you are the first, you, you just did the first step to graphic design. And as you saw, it's, it is so easy and so simple. So we will try day by day to just improve ourselves and do our best to become a good uh, graphic designer. So yes, this is enough for today. I will leave you with Mama Savnat. Please, please, please try to practice. Please, please, please try to do your best in your work. And I'm just waiting for you to just amaze me as you did before. And I want you to just keep amazing me and show me really great works. Thank you for your time and thank you for your participation. Wish you best of luck and see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to talk about different things and different uh, tools. We are, we're going to use them and it's going to be fun. So thank you again. And I will leave you with Mama Sabna. Please try to practice and do your best. Bye-bye, John. Go ahead, Mama